If you're hungry for, your desire uh, is to know more about what this verse is explaining, um, plan on being a part of this, okay? But he gives very two very distinct orders. To the men, he says, men, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Now, we can understand the picture of Christ loving the church. We all get that. In fact, we have talked about that since the beginning of the church. I mean, the the church has done really, really well at explaining how much Jesus loves us. We sang about it since we were in preschool. But men, he is ordering us to do what seems to be the obvious. Love your wives. And every Valentine's Day card that you've given your wife has said that. I love you. Hopefully it said that. (laughs) But why is he commanding us to do that? Why is that an order for us? And we have learned, we've come to learn that the reason that's an order for us is because that's not in our nature to do Our nature is the respect side of things. We get the respect side of things. We understand that from when we're little boys. We understand how the the code of respect works. Just like from little girls, they understand the code of love. They understand by nature they love. That's why he doesn't command the ladies to love their husbands. You guys do that by nature. That is who you are. I will never question or doubt the fact that my wife loves me. I know that. And you know what? She will never question the fact that I respect her. I mean, I respect her. She is an amazing woman. She's an amazing mother. She's an amazing housekeeper. She's an amazing wife. I mean, there is lots of reasons for me to respect her, and it's real easy. It comes totally natural for me to respect her. But does she know that I respect? Love her. (laughs) Does she know that? Do I show that? Am I about the business of showing her love? Unconditional love. And flip that around. I know that she loves me, but does, do I know that she respects me? I realize when we say that word respect, there can be some knee-jerk reactions, right? It's like, ugh, that word. Because their tendency is for um, the idea of respect to be attached to um, uh, ego trip, uh, uh, power trip, and understand that that's not it at all. Why Paul is encouraging the wives to show respect to their husbands because he's saying that is their Love language, that is what they need to hear. And when you are showing us respect, it is going to be so easy for us to reciprocate love. And this is what we talked about this weekend. You want the positive flow to be happening in your relationship. Wives, show respect to your husbands. Husbands, show love to your wives. Often, though, it is the reverse. There's disrespect going on, and there's lack of love happening. And one's feeding the other. And I can't tell you what came first, the chicken or the egg. I don't know. But many, many marriages are spinning out of control. And folks, the divorce rate in the church is the same as it is in the world. It's not different. It's not better. And we've been given clear guidelines, clarity from the Word. This is, man, I mean, and this is how God made us. We're, we're distinct, us, men and women, yet both created in the image of God. Both have equal value with the Father. And the oneness that you and I have, we all have together with Christ is the same. We, we are one with Him, whether you're male or female. So let me just ask a couple of quick questions. Women, when you are experiencing love from your husband, what does that look like? When you are feeling loved by him, what does that look like? Any practical? Because there's some guys that need some practical ideas here. (laughs) You're accepted as you are. Okay, good. Being kind to you, yes, that certainly would feel like love, yeah. 
being allowed to be emotional and held when you need it. Yeah. You need, you need, you, you need to, you need. I'll, I'll email that to you. Yeah, I mean, any more? Come on, ladies, you know what it's like to. Takes care of you. Okay. Takes care of you. You are made to feel special. Yeah. Okay. Good. Men, were you listening? Okay. Okay, now, men, it's your turn to ask, answer this question. When are the times when you feel respected by your wife? <laughs> that was, I was getting nervous. <laughs> Feeling affirmed by her words, what she says to you, affirming who you are. Yeah, okay, good. Giving space when you need it, okay? <laughs> Let's you help her. Allows you to have that role. Yeah, good. Thanks me for the little things that I do. Uh-huh. Yep, good. For... Just things that you do, okay. See, ladies, you're kind of getting the, the picture here. Men are doers, right? That's why, that's why it frustrates you when, when uh, like what Lynn said, you, you know, you might be emotional and you want to talk, but really you don't want a fixer. You don't want things to be fixed. You just want a listener, and we are doers by nature, right? We, we, are, we want to be able to fix things. So when, uh, so when we are hearing that kind of feedback from you, thank you for what you do. That is, that's making us feel respected. See, it's not power trip, it's not ego trip. It's understanding the, the fundamental differences between how we were created and celebrating that. And it's through that, that, that this oneness that Paul is talking about here in Ephesians chapter 5 begins to happen. And that, folks, is the picture of the oneness that we have as the bride of Christ with Christ. Now let's go back to the big picture. Because this really is the main point that Paul is making. You see, he began Ephesians with reminding us, hey, we are adopted in as sons and daughters. Okay, We're not orphans. And the orphan spirit does not belong in the church. We are adopted in as sons and daughters. We are no longer servants or slaves. We have been invited to the table to feast with the Almighty. And we are now a part of the family business with Him. And then he says, And this oneness that Christ has with us is significant in this carrying out the family business. Now, we are His bride. He is our bridegroom. So if we go back to this marital picture, we understand what our role is. And it leads us to a very significant question. Are you respecting him? It feels kind of weird to ask that question. Does your life show respect to him? Does he feel respected by you, by your words, by your worship, by your actions, by your lifestyle? And are you experiencing his love? I mean, are you really experiencing this love that he lavishes and it is unconditional and it is a relationship? pursuit of love for us go ahead and try to find the the boundaries of this love 
Because you won't find, you can't, it's neither the height nor the depth nor the width nor the length. You, you, you can't experience the fullness of his love. But are you experiencing his love for you?